So let's move on to the next session, neonatal cholestasis, how to proceed. The presenter, Dr. Avinash Khare. Moderator, Dr. Yacha. Panelists, Dr. Malti, Dr. Girish Gupta, and Dr. Ash Ashley, please. We have a very eminent, uh, actually, panel here. And uh, Dr. Ashley, you all of you know, is an eminent pediatric surgeon who works in Bangalore. And Dr. Girish, a good friend of ours, works in Birmingham Hospital. Dr. Maliti from Tamil Nadu. And uh, you'll see her, oh, every time you'll see her in most of the sessions of national importance. So let us, let us start with this case. <clears throat> good afternoon. Uh, our patient is a one month, 20 days old girl child, caused by birth order, product of a non consanguineous marriage, Maratha community, who is uh, exclusively breastfed. Presented with a progressive increasing yellowish discoloration of her skin and eyes since day of, day of life 5, with an intermittent clay colored stool and excessive irritability, and there was no other positive history. On examination, she was a deeply ectric with a some pallor, anthropometry wise well grown with a weight around a median and a length between a minus one and a median, and head circumference is a normal for it. Hepatomegaly was there with a liver span of 8 cm, firm consistency, and the surfaces were smooth. So, can anybody highlight the problems in this child? What are the problems? Yes, youngsters, come on, come on. This will be your case in the final MD. Any problems you are finding? Go back to the first slide. Jaundice. What he said, increasing yellow is discoloration of skin and eyes since day five of life, <coughs> intermittent clay colored stools, <coughs> and irritability. What would you ask? Any question you would like to ask? Quickly, there is no time. Pardon? Birth weight? 3 kg. 3 kg. Anything else? Huh? Pardon? Vomiting. Vomiting. No. Anything else which is pertinent to this case? Urine color. Urine yeah. color. What was the urine, urine color? Urine color was a dark, uh, staining the diapers. Staining the diapers, right? So what do you make from that? Staining of the uh, diapers. You have got yellow in this, uh, there is jaundice in this child, and the stools are intermittently clear colored. Pardon? No, no, straight, you can't come to Bileria atresia, no. <laughs> Neonatal cholestasis, any child who has got conjugated jaundice, high colored urine, with or without pale stools, would be neonatal cholestasis. So this is a case of neonatal cholestasis. Right, next. Go to the next slide. <coughs> From this, anything you can make out. Deeply ectric, anthropometry, okay. Hepatomegaly with liver span of eight centimeters and smooth consistency, smooth uh, liver, splenomegaly of four centimeters. So there is hepatosplenomegaly in this child. So there is neonatal cholestasis with hepatosplenomegaly. What, age of the child? what is the age of the child? One month, 15 days. One. So that is around 40 days, 40 days, 45 days of age. And starting onset is around, say, five, five days of life. Yeah. Day of next, life. next slide. On other detail history, mm. there was a no stop of fever, lethargy, irritability, refusal to feed. No irritability, you said there is a irritability? Yeah. OK. <laughs> It's like when I write my pharmacy paper. <laughs> <laughs> Parliament, the statement should be consistent. Yes, Even if you are giving a wrong statement, give it consistently wrong. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There was no history of a convulsion, no history okay. suggestive of a defective vision or hearing impairment, mm. no history of a recurrent respiratory infections, okay. no history of constipation, mm. no history of abdominal distension, bleeding from many sides or ultra sensorium. Mm. This was a clinical photographs to show yeah, the case the soul is confusing what is yes. there in the soul what do you want to highlight the soul is also it tricks uh, that we want to it I mean they, there is, the it is, it there, with there is something the on the soul no there is not so this is only to highlight it in the baby is, and the deep it that's there, what you yes. want to say what is your what did you do next no no investigation hide hide the slide 
<clears throat> now what would you do in this baby? You have NC neonatal cholestasis and you have got uh, actually hepatosplenomegaly in this child. It is full 3.5 kilogram weight baby. There is no other history in this child. Response from the audience. Anything? What would you like to do? Yeah, investigation, MR, MR, chodo. Come to the, you must develop a scientific acumen and based on the priorities. So you tell us what would you do now? The child is with you. Very good. Yeah, brilliant. You are responding so well since yesterday. Brilliant. You are doing DM gastroenterology? With you? Yeah. Uh, that is why he is talking. I, 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 think, I think Professor Yacha, he deserves an applause for yes. this. Wonderful. <laughs> Very good. So you will look for the stool color. He said stool color intermittently pale colored. So intermittently pale colored would raise a question. It can be. But then you have to see for yourself. So what is the stool color in the hospital, which has been observed by the doctors? Mother may say anything. Say it was a clay color. It was clay colored. It How many times you have seen? <laughs> Repeatedly, we have confirmed, sir, it was a clay Every color. Every observer agreed with the pale stool color? Yes. No, yes or no? Confidence. Yes, sir, yes. Yes, okay. So that is very important thing, Dr. Girish. Especially you could highlight on this point. No, especially because the urine is dark in color and if they have nappies, you know, you can get a false impression. So I think observing the stool color is of vital importance. That's the single most important test that you could do Malati, properly. What do you do actually the, in your practice? Is you most look? of the most cheap, easily done and can be done by us. So if you see a golden yellow, you can at least uh, exclude biliary atresia. That is better, bright golden yellow colored stool. If it is pure white, then you can think more or less it is going to be bilirubin. So when it's pale, in between only, then you really have to go for many investigations. If it's white, you just have to send it to Dr. Ashley immediately. If it's golden yellow, then you don't disturb him. We've already disturbed him from yesterday. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, Dr. Ashley, you want to say something? Uh, no, I'll go after the lady. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say that I think all you know is that there is biliary obstruction somewhere from the canalicular membrane to the gut. I don't think you can jump to biliary atresia at this stage. And I think even if the stool is very pale, with all respect, I wouldn't send it to the surgeon first because there are many causes of biliary <coughs> obstruction and pale stool that oh. don't require a surgeon. Got it. Uh, can I? Yes, please. I'd just like to ask one question to the audience and I'd like some responses. Maybe you can try again. Uh, is there any antenatal mention in this particular case of anything found in the antenatal scans on the mother? That's one thing. What would you expect if you're looking for that? And regarding the stool, I cannot overemphasize the importance. I'll just give you a few practical uh, examples which I personally follow and which I think are important. One is you need to get transparent containers in the ward. You should ask the parent to collect it. The nurse will not do it. You'll ask the parent to collect it in these transparent connectors every day and keep it and examine it like you asked Professor Yacha many times, not once. Looking at it, as was mentioned by Girish in the, in the nappy, can be stained with urine and can be a false uh, indication. If you're getting bright yet yellow ones, and then you're getting a little paler, and then bright yellow again, it's something else. So I think these practical things are very important, and this is a very simple way of you know, going forward. Right. Uh, sometimes what happens, I'm just, just joking, so baby doesn't pass the stool. Sir, I don't color so what do you do Anybody can tell me, residents, use your common sense. What would you do? You have to see the stool. PR examination you can do, insert a little finger, and you can have the color of the stool. Oh. PR, a little finger, not index. <laughs> <laughs> Very important. Now, sometimes it happens. Very rarely, but it can happen. So you have the tools at hand, and nurses, obviously, what Dr. Ashley is saying, they don't perform their duties as we are expecting them to perform, even with the best of the best salaries in the government sector as well. Next, please. Oh my God. 
this way investigation hemoglobin were 7.5 so what would you what would interest you in the investigation here i would love to do what you should look for ye to panel hai what would you look for yes sir i'll be yes No, you tell us now from this. What are you finding? Go to the go to the mic. Total bilirubin of seven point nine with direct of four point six. So that is definitely a conjugated hyperbilirubin. What will be your next priority? Fine, agreed. Uh, next thing, next thing in the investigation. Next, the alkaline phosphatase and GGT are high suggestive of uh, again. Uh, cholestatic obstruction no you would do importance to ggt or alkaline phosphate ggt is more important what is the ggt level here 262 is high what is the normal level more is the high sir ggt it's is high. high it's high okay what else the rest anything the else would you give any importance to the transaminase is agot igpt or alt st uh, not in this case uh, here but matlab uh, some uh, actually this is a well thriving child if you are a uh, low birth weight preterm babies then we, we could have thought of intrauterine in that case wo band kar do intrauterine band karna hai transaminases case, may be case, elevated case. in ha here it is not almost important. all cases Haan. of neonatal cholestasis it doesn't tell you much why do you want to do ggt why you want to ggt what is the importance of ggt in this case cholestasis no what cholestasis is intrahepatic also cholangitis because in biliary atresia gamma gt may be high it is high usually yes. and else your pfi cdds mm -hmm. what we were talking in the earlier case low high or normal so that is the importance otherwise there is not nothing much in the lft next next please sir, next sir, investigation one. what would you do anybody baaki band kar do sir one uh, one comment sir uh, yeah please. please so in you sit down and there yeah, he is brilliant he okay. can go into the dm <laughs> no, if he no, answers this, very well just just uh, to stress the same point the liver function test you will look for only two thing one is conjugated bilirubin and ggt ggt not to diagnose biliary atresia but to see low or normal gt gamma gt because rest of the uh, condition you can get high gamma gt with neonatal hepatitis and any other condition so it doesn't help you to make a diagnosis of biliary atresia gamma gt you look for normal and low to find out type 1 or type 2 Correct. especially type 2 pfic is that right it is only an indicator not diagnostic so what would you do the next investigation would be what in your chamber yeah yeah no 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 not you program no, always not always give vitamin k before actually you see the child touch with cholestasis give vitamin k always very important next now what would you do ultrasonography wonderful abhi aap thoda sa ruk jana baaki log kahenge what is in ultrasound what would you ask for radiologist not the jaw ultrasound kara do ho nahi ha pardon gall bladder kya presence absence military diet fasting ultrasound very good fasting ultrasound and then what would you do next ask the radiologist wo aise khud nahi karega and radical radical chhod do adult ki tarah nahi gall bladder contractility after the feed number 2 what else quick quick cord sign okay what is that called triangular cord triangular cord okay triangular cord presence of gall bladder contractility of the gall bladder and what else and colloidal cyst very important colloidal cyst can be diagnosed very easily on ultrasound and there are many cases 5% to 7% in our series in india where there may be actually colloidal cyst in these cases and they are missed up to 6 7 months they are not operated when they are operable so remember that cordocal cysts gall bladder fasting contractility triangular cord sign or anything else may be there in the ultrasound that is the importance of that can i uh, what is the ultrasound yes sir uh, i i just like to add to those ultrasound findings because this is going to be the second time i'm going to do it because i don't get this information the first time it's asked for 
Yesterday I pointed out that you need to ask for something and then you'll get it. You need to look for intrahepatic dilatation. If you find intrahepatic dilatation or you find any cystic form of dilatation, it probably leads you either to a cholidocal cyst-like picture or sometimes cystic forms of biliary atresia. You have to yeah, consider that's that. Right. That's very important. What is this cord sign? You all said, yes, yes, cord sign. What is that cord sign? Anything with the, it is seen in biliary atresia around 55% of the cases. So the, anybody can say, what is that cord there? Yes, that is that portal level. Yeah, it's the fibrosis of the yes. tissues in front of the portal structures. Okay. That's the important. Next. Ultrasound features. Yes. Ultrasound features. Quick, quick. Ultrasonography showed the mild hepatosplenomegaly with a no alteration of echo texture mm -hmm. and normal CBD without any malformation of a biliary system. The gallbladder could be visualized. So is it adequate, inadequate? Inadequate. Inadequate. So that information has not come. So we should ask for that information which is not available here. Next, please. What is the next investigation? Next, what would you do? Quick. Now, ultrasound is showing you the gallbladder is present, but it is not contractile. There is a, let us say, triangular cord sign present. And what would you think of? What would you think of with these triangular cord sign present? Gallbladder is present, but it is not contractile. Or is it partly contractile? Some contractility is there. What would you think of? Biliary atresia. Biliary atresia. Okay. So is there a need to do all these things? See, ultrasound brain for hydrocapsule is not required. This is not, this is superfluous investigation. Tar screening not required. Ophthalmology for chorioretinite is not required at this stage. We'll go direct, CME viral load awaited, not required. Next, hello, next investigation. Will I will not spend time on this because there's an alarm. Uh, then yeah, tell up. us further, what have you done? Did us can show the good uptake but a poor excuse I have to interrupt. There was no point of doing a HIDA scan over here. This child needs uh, to go to the surgeons. Sir, Dr. Gupte, there is one more point here. Just see the HIDA scan showed good uptake, but poor excretion of the same. What does it mean? Is there excretion or no excretion? The stool, so there is no the stool point. color dictates it. You Everything. really do not okay. need to waste time for a HIDA scan where so your stool finally is what you MRCP, see, I, suggest to, suggest MRCP is not required. May I, may I interrupt, sir? Yes. You have two minutes more to discuss and five days more to send the child to me. <laughs> Already. Because this is the biggest problem. This is the problem of biliary atresia, the yellow sign in the UK, right across the world, and our own experience after 220 biliary atresia patients that we have treated. No. This is the problem, and I think Chairman is trying to emphasize that. See here, you see, she was subsequently started on GAN cyclovir. You will get CME positivity. Dr. Podar, this is the case where we have written a letter on this in Indian pediatrics, because you did not tolerate an unscientific practice somewhere. No, it is not necessarily the same case, but we have written that cytomegalovirus that ultimately turned out to be biliary atresia, going zigzag way, and finally biliary atresia. You tell us finally what did you do? Then we'll rediscuss, if at all we have time. What did you do? Now finally what did you do? No, this is how do you do it? Yes. This is my slide. <laughs> so we operated the child. <laughs> So we all operated the child with a yes. Kasai's procedure. The child was operated with Kasai's procedure and what has happened? Liver biopsy showed nodules and uh, she was subsequently started on GAN cyclovir for CME. Uh, this is per operative. Yeah, per operative biopsy. Okay. No. So per you operative have done, biopsy suggestion. You have done a Kasai's operation has been done. Yes. And what is the follow up on that? Follow up child is improving sir. Means no, what opened up child. Uh, means and uh, then what happened to jaundice? Jaundice is decreased, sir. Huh? Means, uh, jaundice is decreasing, sir. Decreasing? Yeah. Okay. How many months after the surgery? Uh, three, four weeks, sir. Three, four weeks. Okay. It is too early to say whether they have responded to treatment or not. Serum bilirubin is... So we have not to do, go through all these things. And we have confirmation of the uh, um, operative, this laparoscopy features of biliary atresia in this patient. Can you show my slide, that small yes. slide? Then we'll go. Uh, Dr. Yacha, just one point on CMV. Because many times the CMV serological markers are positive. 
and patients are put on gancyclovir. So can we have it from the no, panel no, 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 when no. to treat and when not to treat? CME positive doesn't mean you have to treat. Yes. But CME, there is a study in India also from Ames, from Virari, who has looked with CME, including hepatitis, it resolves. CME hepatitis resolves. Only problem is that they may develop neurological skin. That's all. Otherwise, from liver point of view, we need not to treat patients who are CME positive. Don't do TORCH. Unless the child is sick, there is some indication for doing TORCH, like herpes infection for ALF or a sick child, you may do, otherwise not. Yes. Just show me one slide. Yes. One, a ganti egg minute band kar do. Egg minute. Yes, sir. It's very important. Hai. Because this is a common problem, and we, we want to rectify. We have been doing for the last 20 years this thing. But there are changes in this country. Good changes have taken place. Referrals are now on time. Biopsies are being done. Scans have been avoided. Torch is being deleted from the protocol. So you see, does the urine stain diapers? Yes or no? What is the stool color? Yellow, confirm, confirm, confirm. Pale, not sure. Worried, fast track. If it is pale and not sure, although the child will look normal to you with good weight, Next, you do LFT, LFT we have discussed already, do an ultrasound, go for a liver biopsy if required. Now we have learned one more thing from, the, uh, from our own experience, that if you find a cyst at the poda, we need not to do even liver biopsy. They are by and large 100% actually having bilirial atresia. So biopsy is not mandatory in all cases. Next, I know you will pass a comment. No, no. <laughs> Pale stools, consider biliary atresia and uh, ultrasonography, best bet for cyst and also some features, liver biopsy, and plus minus in certain situations where stool is ambiguous, you are not able to decide, and you have to give priming with phenobarbitone or UDCA and uh, do a HIDA scan in certain situations. And then maybe at times, in a very rare situation, we may do ERCP at times, but uh, again, to find out intrahepatic cyst but it is a, actually there are problems with ERCP as well. Next slide, and this is the triangular cord sign. Next, please. And uh, that is what you will do. We'll not even do torch. We'll not go nuclear scan. Simple four steps for biliary atresia diagnosis. And I'm sure you'll learn to look at the stools and do justice with the patients. Sir, I'd like to make a point regarding CMV hepatitis. Treating a uh, IgM CMV positive is wrong. We, uh, CMV hepatitis is diagnosed on the basis of a liver biopsy tissue which shows CMV PCR positive. So there has to be a clear inclusion bodies. Look, beta, I be too chota hai. I will tell you. As I don't teach, we know breastfeeding has to be stopped in certain conditions. Yet we don't tell it to the press. We don't tell openly every pediatrician because it is going to set a wrong trend. How many times you have found CMV positivity in liver biopsy? So do, forget about it. I think we are digressing from the main topic and Dr. Uh, you know, yes, sir. Dr. Ashley, your comments. Uh, can I have a minute? Yeah. See, I think the message that should go very strongly is if you have a white stool, given all the things that we said that you should do to find a white stool, if you have it, don't hesitate. This time is the right time for it to come to surgery, 50 days to 60 days. After that, it's really not, you can see already there's fibrosis. So I think that message should be unequivocally sent to everyone, and we should follow that message. On the prognostic side, how would you counsel patients today who come to you with biliary atresia? I know all of us have traditionally had a very, very uh, sad sort of prognostic uh, counseling, saying that, We'll see, 30% might get better, we don't even know, and after that you might you know, need something else. I think you can confidently counsel today that up to, if sent before 60 days, up to 40% can clear their bile, live quite good lives for the early infancy and childhood, but all of them will eventually be rescued by transplantation. You have what is called sequential treatment now, and you can tell them about it. Whether it's affordable, can be done in India, etc., is, is a moot question. So I think when you counsel, be more positive than you were, say, 10 years ago. And I personally think biliary atresia, though, though it's a very, very distressing disease, definitely has, with medical help, post-operative care. I think Professor Yacha said, nutrition, nutrition, nutrition. If you want that bile to consistently flow, what the surgeon achieves in the first few weeks, 
make sure that you are pushing the child to good normal nutrition. Any buckets of UDC are not going to help. The best secret to GOG is good nutrition. I think if you can push these messages to families, you'll have many children with biliary atresia who have a better life today than they had 10 years ago. With that, I will thank uh, Abba for... Doc, can, you, can I make one point, please? Uh, no, I will defer to the lady. Dr. Heidi. The lady. Um, can I just point out one recent study, the French study, it's not that recent, but there are other studies around the world, but that was a particularly good study which showed the earlier the better. So all the textbooks say less than 70 days, less than so many days, but that was the first big study that showed that the earlier you operate, the better the outcome and the best outcome was in the under 30 days and the worst outcome was in the older ones. So. But uh, at the same time, I think you should also counsel that in India, the mortality for under 30 days operations done in centers who are not doing more than, say, five cases a year is very high. So under 30 days is not an easy, way, easy, easy patient to treat. So whilst we still stick to that 30 to 60 day period, I think that's a good window to operate. Excuse me, excuse me. Actually, sir, asked for one antenatal history, but you know. Sorry, I hog the session. No, no, but that is that is wrong. This is very appropriate because they they need to get the message. Excuse me, Ashley, sir, asked for one antenatal history, but he not answered. I I was not going to answer. You were going to answer. No, I I just wanted to mention that with with the resolution we have on ultrasound nowadays, and with the expertise we have in prenatal scanning. Cholidocal cysts are being picked up. So you can intervene early and you can counsel better. Biliary atresia also, when, the, when, when there's the cystic types or when any, any sort of uh, fibrosis in that area, they're picking it up. Uh, so I think there is an antenatal place, at least there's a place for antenatal screening for this condition as well. Just to say that cyst can be misinterpreted as gallbladder. Sorry. Yeah, that's the study that we use uh, to define uh, one from the other and to define the type of biliary atresia. I can't go into that as a surgical problem, but the peroperative cholangiogram, I think, is the gold standard and the final court of appeal.